Hello, welcome to Electron Control. In this lecture, we're going to look at the Smith predictor. So after this lecture, you should be able to explain the effect large time delays have on the system performance and also explain how the Smith predictor can be used to overcome the effect of the time delay on the system performance and the need for when using the Smith predictor to have a accurate estimate of the actual system model and also of the time delay. So previously we've spoken about types of delays when we looked at practical consideration. So we have delays in control due to computation. So if you remember previously I said to you that you're really you want to you want your to make sure your computational delay is 10 to 20 percent approximately of your sample interval so say for example if you're sampling every second you would ideally like your computational delay to be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 you also have delays in measurements so transport delays so if you're thinking kind of of practical applications such as an autonomous vehicle, transport delays tend to be very, very small because the actuator and sensor are located within the same, well, within the same operation. However, kind of if you think of applications from chemical processes such as the heating of electric theatre, typically the, the actuator and the sensor are located quite far apart. So when the controller takes action, so maybe it heats up, um, well, it provides more voltage to the heating element, um, it can take time, and we, we're not talking about 0, 0.0 seconds in the case maybe with the autonomous vehicle, we're talking here maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds. Okay, that it can take for the sensor to pick up the action that the control system has just taken. Another kind of good example is if you think your shower in your house, when you turn on the shower, it takes roughly 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds for the water to get to the desired temperature and you tend to kind of notice that the 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 warmth of the of the of the water oscillates it gets hot and cold hot and cold until it gets into steady state so here we've got an example of a liquid heating system so we've got a small vessel that contains liquid which has been heated up we've got a heating element here and a some sort of temperature sensor, some form of temperature sensor here. And what we're saying is it takes approximately a minute for the, the action that's taken here to be detected via the sensor. Okay, and you can see here I've denoted it TD, and that there is your transport delay in seconds. So a delay introduces kind of limitations to the achievable performance of the feedback control system. Perhaps stability might be questionable. Um, the system might be quite difficult to control if you don't take into account, for example, that if you apply a control action, you're not immediately going to see the effect of the control action at the sensor. So you need to be aware of that. Small time delays um, can be ignored. So when we talked about kind of the autonomous vehicle, they're not really going to have too much effect on the system performance. But when you're talking about 20, 30 second delays, and if you don't account for them, it might cause you issues. And what it can do is it can cause the integrate the PID to work over time. So if you remember on the previous video, when we looked at the PID and we talked about the, the previous int that was building up at every sample, um, sample, we were building up that previous int. So what can happen is if you're taking control action and you don't Im immediately see or within the next sample, if you don't see the action, um, being measured at the sensor, you end up with the, the error effectively still there. So the control system continues just to pump out more and more power, and as a result, what, you can, what it can end up doing is causing the PID to overreact and result in the system oscillating. And typically, the larger the transport delay, the more oscillations you you would get on the system um, on the system, if you, especially if you didn't account for that. The anti-wind-up can be used to minimise this effect. So if you map on your maximum actuator output to your control, that can minimise this effect. So what I've got here is a feedback control system 
What I've initially done is tune this PI, PI controller with this first order system subject to a transport delay of zero seconds. And then here you can see what feedback, um, just to, I've used a value here of one and I've got put a little bit of noise on the measurement. So you can see here transport delay equals zero seconds. You'll see here and then you get in a response that looks pretty nice. Okay, so it was tuned to give us a response that looks like that. So it's in final value in about 400 seconds. And then what you'll notice then is I've increased in intervals of eight seconds. I've increased the transport delay. And what you'll notice is on the what what effect this is having on the system responses, it's introducing overshoot and then more and more oscillation. And as I said previously, as you as your transport delay is increased. If you don't let to be comp well take into account that you end up with perhaps a control system that is just going to keep putting more and more power out, and you get more and more oscillation on your system response, as you can see here. So TD um, transport delay, and what you'll see here is the closed loop transfer function when I'm here when I'm taking into account the transport delay here where n is just the number of samples delayed. So say for example, if the number of samples delayed was 10 and your sample interval was 10, uh, sorry, your sample interval was one second, it would be one multiplied by 10, so it'd be 10 second delay. So what I'm gonna move on to now is talking about the Smith predictor. So this is a method developed in 1957. It's a method used for closed loop control system to effectively compensate for when you've got large time delays. And what you need for the Smith predictor to work is a mathematical model. So an estimate, sorry, mathematical model of your system. So an estimate of your actual system. Because what you need to do is to be able to predict effectively what the behavior is of the system without the time delay. What you also need is an estimate of the time delay. So you need a mathematical model of the actual system and you also need an estimate of the time delay. And what it does, it attempts to remove the effect of the time delayed time delay from the control system. So if you get a very good mathematical model of the system, um, we'll, we'll say if it's exact, and you also manage to exactly estimate what the time delay is, you will effectively remove the effect of that time delay. So this is the form of the Smith predictor. So what you can see is you've got your normal um, here, see that, well you've got your normal control system I should say, but then you'll notice here you've got these two extra blocks and these two some injunctions. So the control output here, U, is effectively multiplied by G hat of Z where g hat of z is your estimate of the actual system. Although here this is your actual system, and you'll notice here I've, I've called it g of z, because in fact in this, in this lecture series we're just going to use a mathematical model to actually represent the actual system, and likewise for the delay. So here is our estimate of the system, so a mathematical model, what we've developed based on the actual system. And you'll see here it feeds down here into this sum injunction, and then that'll feed back then to take away from the reference and form the error. And this effectively here is your prediction. Okay, so it's your prediction of what's going on here. Obviously not considering the time delay, so this is feeding back, and then it's taking action on what you're predicting your state is going to be here without the time delay. And then what you'll notice here is the g of z multiplied by the delay. And then here, well, what we've got out here sorry, is, is y with the delay. So y with the delay. And then this is this is what we're actually getting here. And this is here what we're estimating we're going to get in terms of our output with the delay. So this is actual estimate. We take away the estimate from the actual and we form a discrepancy. And this here is effectively your correction. <clears throat> your correction element. So when we add this onto the prediction, if we were to have an identical mathematical model of the actual system and an <clears throat> identical um, capture of the time delay, it would effectively remove 
the effect of the of the time delay. So just to start off, we just to, what I'm going to do now is just go through a process whereby you become a little bit more familiar or give you an example of how of the Smith predictor working. So here I've just got a feedback control system, the like the one you saw earlier with PRI control, first order transfer function, and a delay here. In this case, a delay of zero samples. So we've got no delay at the moment. <clears throat> the simulation I'm going to go through, and also the previous simulation. If you watch the simulink video, I will I will run through that. So what you'll notice is here, subject to the unit step input, this is your output, and what you'll notice is the system response looks as it did before. Although previously, when we used the system, obviously we had multiple graphs. What I've now um, introduced is a delay of 80 samples. And what I should say, that I didn't say previously on the previous one, that um, here a actual sample interval of one second was used. So in this case, if for, for a TD of 80, okay, this would be Z to the minus 80, okay, and it'd be 80 multiplied by one, because we had a sample interval of one, so it'd be 80 seconds. And that's where that 80 comes from. And you can follow all the other calculations through. So that's the same as this one here. So here we've got um, transport delay of 80 samples. In this case, a sample um, interval is one second. So this is going to give us a delay of 80 seconds. And what you'll see is what I've got here now is the PI control, so what we saw previously with the 80 second transport delay. So this graph here corresponds to the just the feedback control system without the Smith predictor. And what you'll see is now you've got quite a lot of oscillation on your system response. So you're not really getting great that great performance. I've now implemented the Smith predictor. And again, I'm going to go if you if you watch the Simlink video, the MATLAB Simlink video on this part, you'll see how I use this here, or this, well, this here, this, this system, to effectively capture this mathematical model based on known input and measured output data. So you'll see the model, it's accurate up to four decimal places. <clears throat> okay, in the Z domain, it's it can be a bit sensitive, and if you were to look at this model here in terms of higher than four decimal places, you would see that there is a bit of a discrepancy between the two. You can see here I've got an accurate estimate of the time delay. And here is the PI control with the 80 second transport delay in the Smith predictor. And what you'll notice is that looks pretty close. There's a little, probably a little bit of difference because these models aren't exactly identical. They look, they look at, they, well, to four decimal places they are. But what you'll notice is that the performance looks similar to what the PI controller looked like in the previous slide. So if I go back here, that was subject to zero transport delay. So as I said to you, if you get an if you get an accurate or in this case um, bang on estimate of the transport delay, in this case a very very close um, estimate of the system model, you will effectively eliminate the effect of the steady state of sorry of the you will effectively eliminate the effect of the transport delay. And to be honest, when I was just saying that there was it's there's a slight difference, you also have to take into account that you've got this 80 second here offset, which obviously you didn't have here. Okay. Again, there's gonna be a slight difference because there is a but it's gonna be probably not even noticeable. Right, so then what I've done here is okay, you can see now we've got um the mathematical models um look the same. What I've now done though is I've said, right, our estimate of the time delay does not match the actual time delay. So this, in this case, now we've got a 120 second um, transport delay because it's 120 samples. Um, sorry, N is 120. So that's um, N samples delay where the sample interval is one second, 120 times one, so 120 seconds. And what you'll notice is now the system response has become a little bit sluggish and it's taken us quite a long time to actually get to steady state. Although you haven't got any overshoot, but 
yeah, the system response is a bit is a little bit sluggish. Um, and the PI control with the 80 second transport delay, so this is without the Smith predictor. You can see now we've got quite a lot of oscillation. So although the Smith predictor is, is quite sluggish, it's still giving us better system performance than not having the, than not having the Smith predictor because we're still getting into steady state um, faster than the PI control with 80 second transport delay. So you can see even at this point we're roughly in steady state, in this point it's still oscillating. And obviously there's no oscillation here, whereas this oscillation here for a lot of systems, um, it's not going to be very energy efficient if you're um, putting in too much power, removing it, yeah, not, not great. So I think even so, the Smith predictor here gives better performance. And then what I've done here is I've put discrepancy in terms of the estimated system model. So say for example in system identification you might not you might not have had very much many data points you might have, you might have had very noisy data and this is the math the, the best mathematical model that we could generate based on the captured data from the system and then it's here you can see the transport delay I've put as being equal so the PI control with 80 second transport delay here so no Smith predictor you can see what is what's going on there with the discrepancy in the model it looks quite similar to the previous graph um, and then you see here PI control with a 80 second transport delay and the Smith predictor so previously when when we had a discrepancy of the transport delay we had like this sluggish response and when the models were pretty much looking the same now you can see that the PI with the A second transport line, the Smith predictor, has actually introduced oscillation to the system response. Although again, it has it has given a slightly better performance because you can see it's it's perhaps in steady state a little bit earlier than the without the um, Smith predictor. Although performance really isn't isn't really as 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 good as we'd hoped for. So I hope that's kind of given you an initial kind of insight into the Smith predictor. So when you've got a PID and you've got an unaccounted delay, you can get unacceptable system performance. So like I said, by the time the, the system starts to react, the integral contribution is already too high and you can end up, as you saw in the initial graph, where you get quite a lot of oscillation on the system response. So the Smith predictor, if you introduce the Smith predictor, um, it gives you much better system performance. However, you do need a, a quite a good estimate of the system model and a good estimate of the transport delay. Um, so yeah, it can the Smith predictor. It's really only then it's a next kind of step from PID, so it can be realised very easily in terms of model well, model-based um, control for embedded control or in really in just to, in terms of digital control system, it can be introduced relatively easily. And as I said, in the, in the mathematics, what it effectively does is it just, if you've got an accurate model of the system and an accurate um, capture of the time delay, it effectively just removes the effect of the time delay. So the system behaves much, much better. So what I've got here is two exercises for you to have a go at. So what I want you to do really is review the notes. So we reference the Unity Feedback Control System employing a PID controller located in the feed forward path. So the, the form that we saw earlier, so i.e. The, the PID is in series with the system to be controlled, sketch the form of the Smith predictor. And what I want you to do is explain how a Smith predictor can be employed to remove the effect of a time delay in the control system. And then exercise two, explain how the notion of prediction and correction is realized and also the effect of the time delay if a Smith predictor is not employed. So that goes back to the first graph that we saw where we didn't have a Smith predictor and we got quite a lot of oscillation on the system response. So stop the video for 10, 15, 20 minutes and have a go at those questions. So I hope um, in summary um, you've understood the effect that the time delay has on the system performance. So if you have a large time delay, it can cause the control system to effectively overreact and give out too much power and you can end up with 
with kind of quite large oscillations on the system performance or system response. The Smith predictor effectively eliminates the effect of the time delay. That's what it's aiming to do. Um, as a, and as I've said, what you need for that is an accurate estimate of the system model and time delay. So I hope really um, that by now you can explain the effect large time delays have on the system and you'll also be able to explain the Smith predictor and the effect it has on the system performance. So as I said, if you've got large time delays, it'll affect to reduce the, the effect of the, of the transport delay or eliminate it if you get a very, very good model or a bang on model of the system, which is not not likely because the model is is just an estimate of the actual system and it comes with error. Um, but yeah, like I said, what you need is an, ac is an estimate of the model and also an estimate of the time delay. So I hope you found this lecture interesting. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email me.